Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is doing great. Hi, Jameson, Joseph. Hi, Pachu, Mona, Dylan, Jairam. Good to see so many students and members in on this class. Focusing on speaking part one materials coming from our world-class websites, aehelp.com for six full practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons, and much, much more. G-I-E-L-T-S-help.com for the general version of the exam. Hi, I'm Arjeet. Good to see more members joining in. Hi, Samir. Our websites, students, they look like this blue background for the academic. Click that big red button to join. We are British Council IELTS registration centers as well. So you can register your IELTS exam with us. For the general version of the test, look for the green background. Click that big red button there to get access to all of our videos strategies, tips, and practice exams. If you are studying for the academic, go to your Android or Apple store, download the app, Academic IELTS Help. Lots of free goodies there. If you like it, you can upgrade to the premium version. And if you have questions, students, then write me an email, Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Dylan, if you want to be a member, you can join us through the app or our premium course. If you want to be a member of the YouTube channel, click the join button beside the subscribe button. Students, this is uh, the final class for this week. Uh, next week, we kick off the classes on Wednesday at this time. Okay, so let's finish strong today. We are going to warm up with some examiner questions. Make sure to repeat after me. Repeat the questions and answers. Students focus a lot on giving good answers, but they never really practice asking questions nearly as much. And that is good strategy. It is good practice before the exam to ask questions. That helps your brain to understand the questions better during the speaking. And it gives you an empathetic view from the examiner's perspective. So that makes you more confident and more able to give good responses. So asking and answering questions are good to practice before the test. Students, the speaking, 12, 15 minutes roughly. The examiner will greet you in the examination room. Uh, you should always arrive early to your speaking uh, exam. How early should you arrive? Like when should you get to your examination center? for your speaking. So before we get into these questions. So when should you get there? When should you arrive to, Dylan says maybe 30, 45 minutes. Uh, Nimatalu says 10 to 20 minutes. Um, I would recommend even an hour, okay? Arrive one hour early, okay? 30 minutes is the absolute minimum. In the one hour, get familiar with your surroundings. Eat a bit of food. Drink fluids. Go to the bathroom. Don't drink too much coffee. You'll be hyperactive. That's not good when you're going into an interview. Okay. And very importantly, bring speaking questions with you and practice 
with someone there. All right, that's so, so important. That one tip, students, can help to increase your band score by a half or even a full band score, okay? Um, so find another person, don't be shy. That will help you to be confident. Who cares, right? Uh, if you see somebody just kind of sitting there and staring at their papers, say, hey, are you here for the speaking? And they say, yeah. I am. And then you can say, well, do you have a few minutes? Can we ask each other some questions? Can we speak in English? And maybe they'll say, sure, that's a good idea. Or maybe they'll say, no, uh, leave me alone. And then you can say, but why? I want to help you. And if they're like, no, then you can say, okay, fine. I'll find somebody else and then find somebody else, but be focused. Okay. So warm up the brain. How long um, sh before your exam should you wake up? If you have like, a, let's say that your speaking is at 10 a.m., for example, when should you wake up? If it's in the morning. Like 10 a.m., let's say. Hmm? When should you wake up? So Gunjan says maybe like 6 a.m.? Yeah, so latest at 7, okay? So uh, the answer at least, or about three hours before your exam. Because science shows, and this is science, this is not me saying this. After sleep, okay? So there's uh, scientific evidence that shows that your brain reaches maximum functioning. It's at its best about three hours uh, after you wake up. So if your exam is in the afternoon, like let's say your exam is at 4 p.m., you might want to take a nap, okay? Let the brain rest, let it recharge. So uh, if you have an exam at like 4 p.m., then maybe uh, try to get an hour of uh, siesta from like 11.30 to 12.30 or 1 p.m., okay? Get, a, get another, just another quick little charge into your brain. That can actually help you to pick up half a band score. So, of course, having good English, being confident, that's the best way to get the high band scores, but also paying attention to small steps of physiology, such as having a good breakfast, uh, wearing comfortable clothes, uh, thinking and speaking with English two, three hours before your exam, uh, arriving early, staying confident, those can be the difference in a full band score, okay? So if you have a band score of six and you need a band score of seven, you might not need more English. You might just need to change your approach physiologically, mentally to the exam. All right, students, so you get to the exam, you're feeling great, you're feeling confident, you know you're there to do a job, okay? Janak, how can you be confident in front of the examiner? Imagine that the examiner is your grandfather or your grandmother, okay? So be confident. Imagine that the examiner is grandpa or grandma. They love you no matter what, okay? And remember, the sun will shine tomorrow, okay? Life is long. There are second chances. It's not the end of the world, all right? If you don't perform the absolute best, all right? So just be confident. Don't worry about them. Worry about yourself. Okay, and then the examiner will welcome you into the room. And the examiner will say, uh, please take your seat. To that, you should say thank you. OK, 
Okay, so examiner says, please take your seat and respond, answer, thank you. Now, I hope you're repeating me when I say these sentences. Uh, absolutely good advice from Samir. Be yourself. Remember, you're there to do an exam, not to chit chat. Okay. So again, students, that's a really important one. So you are not there to chit chat. You are there to prove your English ability. Do not overspeak. Is that one word? Nope. Uh, do not overspeak. Do not underspeak. Okay. Answer. Explain. Perhaps an example. Okay. That's what you should do. That's what you're there to do. All right. You need to give the examiner enough English so that they can judge your ability. Take a deep breath. Relax. Good advice, Susan Sabla. Absolutely. So again, the examiner says, welcome. Please take your seat. And then you say, thank you. All right. Now, the examiner will ask you, may I see your identification, please? And to this, you will answer. What will you answer? Sudhir says, use simple vocabulary if you don't know complex words. Yeah, uh, Sudhir, the trick is uh, not so much complex words, but rather just complex grammar. You can use simple vocabulary for that. Sure. Um, so Pachu says, yes, of course, here you are. Um, Carolina says, sure, please take a look. Danish. Batati says, yes, of course, here it is. Amarjeet says, sure, here it is. Please have a look. Bishal says, of course, here it is. Bishal, of course, is with one F, of course. Hi, Tina. Tina, did you just do your exam recently? I think you did. I think that's what you're saying. I'm not sure if I remember that correctly. Um, Zainab says, yes, of course, please have a look. Those are all great ways to answer that question. Yes, certainly. Here you are. Please have a look. Okay, again, practice different ways to say this so you can sound natural. Next question they ask you, and this is the, this is the part where sometimes students get a little freaked out because it's a little bit weird. Um, they'll say, what is your full name? And then when they're asking you that, they're kind of staring at you like this, and they're looking at your passport like you're in a police station. Um, but that's because uh, students have cheated on the exam in the past, and uh, they sent lookalikes to do the test instead of them. So don't take it personally, okay? They're not um, there to interrogate you. You're not going to jail, uh, but they just want to make sure that you are really who you say you are, okay? So don't get freaked out when they give you that weird kind of interrogative like, really? Is that really you? Um, so don't freak out, okay? So what is your full name? Dylan says, my given name is Dylan and surname is Adan. However, please just call me by my nickname, Virat. Very good, Dylan. That works. That's fantastic, okay? Uh, Tina, I did see that, that you just did the exam. Do you have your scores yet? No? I'm curious how you did. I know you participated in a lot of these classes, okay? Um, Jairam says, you can call me Jay or Jairam. I think Jairam, you gave the full answer before. That's good. Uh, Roshni says, my given name is Roshni and surname is Kunte. Please call me uh, by my first name, Roshni. By my first name, Roshni. Okay. Hikmatilo. Rachmanov says, my given name is Hikmatilo, and my surname is Rachmanov, so you can call me Hikmatilo. Sure, that works. Yeah. Uh, my family name is Smith, and my given name is Peter. 
please just call me Pete. Okay, so again, very standard. Uh, my family name is uh, Smith. Don't forget your B verbs, students. My family name is Smith and my given name is Peter. Please just call me Pete. Okay, that works. Sound natural, okay? Sound fluent. Some icebreaker questions will follow. The examiner will say, now for part one, I would like to get to know you a little bit better and ask you some questions on a general topic. I will record this for marking purposes. I will give you instructions throughout the speaking exam. Okay. All right. Tina, not bad. It's not bad for a first go. I think you're close. Just keep going. Um, all right. So uh, do you work or study? That's the next question. Do you work or study? Very common question. Be ready for this one. It's definitely a good place to use a correlative conjunction because many of us do some work and some studying at the same time. So, Sudar Akira, I don't know where yours is now in the chat, but just keep writing. I'll read yours later. I read different people's at different times. Tina, just remember, yeah, that your brain is a beautiful learning machine. So keep going. Keep pushing forward, okay? Um, Satisfying Times says, currently I'm working as an IT technician in the public library in my town. At the same time, I'm studying IELTS and TCF, which is a French test. Say that, Satisfying Times, which is a French test. You can't actually say parentheses, French test. Um, Nima Tula says, not only do I have a business um, dealing in almonds, but I'm also studying English to get uh, band 7.5 on the IELTS exam so that I can pursue my higher education in Malaysia. Uh, Nima Talu, not only in, uh, but also is okay. I would go with a both and. So I both work as an almond business owner, and I'm studying English uh, in hopes of getting a band 7.5 so on the IELTS so I can pursue my higher education in Malaysia. Um, v. Gill says, I neither work nor study. I'm planning to study abroad. Uh, Levi Gill, that's okay. It's not a bad answer, but it is kind of awkward since you're sitting for the IELTS exam. I would imagine that you did a little bit of studying to get ready for the test. So this question, students, it's a loaded question. Do you work or study? Uh, does everybody know what a loaded question is? And you do find these on the IELTS exam, okay? A loaded question... is where the person asking, in this case the examiner, assumes that there is already some answer. Okay, That's what we call a loaded question. And the IELTS is kind of designed with these loaded questions because they really don't want the candidates to say, nope, nope, yes, Yes. Nope. Nope. Yes. It would be very difficult to uh, evaluate a person's English level if they could just finish the whole exam by saying, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yes, yes. All right. So these questions are a little bit loaded. They figure that you probably do study if for nothing else than for the exam. Okay. All right. Uh, Amarjeet says, recently I have completed my bachelor's degree in arts stream and now I'm honing my communication skills for further study at Columbia University. Amarjeet, very good. Uh, nice use of the word honing, the verb. Honing means to focus your skills like the honing missile, right, that tracks its target. Um, the OVI, the OV says, basically, I'm a student. I've completed my bachelor's of business administration, uh, majoring in accounting. Uh, since graduating, I've been learning IELTS for my further studies in Canada. OV, very nice answer. Sounds natural. That's great. Fantastic. Okay. 
So <clears throat> I am both working as a legal assistant uh, at a law firm in Vancouver and I'm studying for the IELTS exam because I have plans to do my uh, graduate degree in legal or in law, uh, graduate degree to become a lawyer uh, from uh, Cambridge University in the UK. All right. Okay. So just kind of making that up. Uh, again, using these correlative conjunctions, not only because it helps to create the complex sentence um, or the compound sentence, I should say, uh, but also because it keeps you fluent. So some I've heard students say, wow, you guys at AELP and GILTSHELP.com, you're really pushing students to use these correlative conjunctions like whether or neither nor. Uh, why is that? So why, why do you push the students to use these correlative conjunctions? And I'm going to explain that now a little bit for you. So correlative conjunctions, uh, which include both and, neither nor, either or, whether or, not only, but also, I think that's most of them. Um, so <laughs> students are like, why, why do you guys push students to use these in their speaking and in their writing? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that helps you to increase your band score. So A, uh, many students don't use these. Often students don't use these. So it adds an extra level of uniqueness to your English, okay? And the examiners are kind of looking for that. They're looking for, is this person original? Are they a little bit unique? Or do they just sound like every other IELTS student coming out of a test center um, in uh, New Delhi uh, saying the exact same expressions and phrases? So they're looking for this uniqueness. The other one, uh, reason is these conjunctions help you to stay fluent and connected, okay? So when you create the idea of um, whether I'm studying for this IELTS exam or burning the midnight oil to prepare for my legal um, exams, I find myself often preoccupied by school. Uh, so it keeps you kind of fluent and thinking and moving with your thoughts, okay? So these conjunctions help you to stay fluent and help you to stay connected, okay? Also, they emphasize your language. Okay? So when you use these conjunctions, it makes your message stronger, more impactful, and that has a positive effect on scores. So that's why we like pushing these correlative conjunctions in our lessons and making sure that students use at least a few of them in their speaking and writing. Okay, um, let's keep going here. So why are you taking this test? Okay. Why are you taking this test? Give me a good answer for that question. So why are you taking this test? So satisfying time says, actually, I'm taking the test to complete the requirements to apply at U the University of My Dreams in Frankfurt, Germany, as it is mandatory to have a band of 6.5 or more in academic IELTS. Yeah, satisfying times, it's okay. It's an obligation. 
It's obligatory is another way to say it. It's obligatory. Uh, mandatory is the best word in that context. Satisfying times. Uh, Artem Bailo says, I'm taking this test for the purpose of immigrating to Australia with my family. Moreover, I hope that it will help me with my job search in the future. Artem, that's very good. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm taking this exam to pursue my higher education in England. The faculty of law in Cambridge at Cambridge has a band eight minimum requirement for any international student even if they their first language is English okay so uh, careful students uh, notice how here I basically said why I'm taking the out so I'm both working as a legal assistant at a law firm in Vancouver, and I'm studying for the IELTS exam because I have plans to do my graduate degree. And then the examiner says, so why are you taking this test? Um, don't, so again, you're not just talking to a stranger or your buddy. So don't just go, oh, are you not listening to me? I just answered that question for you. Um, <laughs> so don't say that, uh, but give more details, okay? and reflect, so connect. As I mentioned, I'm taking this exam to pursue my higher education. I'm paraphrasing, I'm saying it another way. Um, students, repeat after me, okay? Repeat after me, so practice your speaking English here. So as I mentioned, I'm taking this exam to pursue my higher education in England. The Faculty of Law at Cambridge has a band eight minimum requirement for any international student, even if their first language is English. Okay. Uh, Nilu Far Mulkarai says, I studied law at university and now I want to continue my major abroad and get a good job there. Thus, I need a band seven or a seven band for acceptance at one of the best universities in Canada. Nilu Far, that's a nice answer. I like it. Okay, uh, Yuya says, uh, I have no specific reason for taking this exam. I just wanted to make sure that I can speak English well, and it's just for my curiosity. Okay, Yuya, that's good. Notice my corrections. Okay, uh, Hikmatillo says, I'm taking this exam in order to enter the University of World Economics and Diplomacy which is in uh, Tashkent. Uh, Hikmatilo, uh, careful not to overspeak, uh, which is situated, I don't think we would naturally, most English speakers wouldn't say situated. It's possible. It's a little bit awkward. We just say, which is in Tashkent. Okay. All right. So far, doing great. Fantastic. Everybody gets a nice big thumbs up and another one um, for doing a good job. Keep pushing, and remember, don't just type, but also talk, okay? Talk as much as I talk in one of these classes, and I guarantee you'll be on your way to a band nine in no time. Part one, the uh, examiner will introduce a topic and ask you some general questions on it, and they'll say something like, uh, let's talk about writing. So let's talk about writing. Okay. Hmm. Wonder what we can talk about writing. And they will start with a fairly simple question like, how often do you write? How often 
do you write? Give me a nice full sentence answer to this question. Pay attention to the grammar. It's a loaded question in the sense that it's always looking to elicit some form of grammar from you. Okay. So Dylan says, I enjoy writing every day, approximately two hours because I'm a student. And also, interestingly, I am writing a book that is about environmental pollution. So that takes up a fair bit of time. Uh, sure, Dylan, don't repeat the two hours. So Dylan says... Uh, I enjoy writing. I frequently write roughly two hours each day. Not only because I'm a student and school demands a certain amount of literature, but also because, uh, let's change it to since, but also since I'm writing a book about environmental pollution, which I'm hoping to publish in the near future. All right, some beautiful language there. So Dylan, I just basically took your answer and tweaked it from a band seven to a band nine answer, okay? Uh, let me show you, Dylan, what's different between yours and mine. Um, so, you write, I enjoy writing every day. Now, every day is a fairly good answer. The question of often, every day is okay. Every day is an okay answer for often. Whenever you have the word often, it's looking for adverbs of frequency, like always, rarely, never, frequently, usually. So that's why I wrote frequently, paraphrasing the word often. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit more reflective of that grammar than saying every day. Um, so I frequently write. If I want to say every day, I might actually stick it in here. Okay, so I frequently write every day, roughly two hours, not only because I'm a student and school demands a certain amount of literature. Literature is, of course, writing and reading, okay? Uh, but also since I'm writing a book about environmental pollution, which I'm hoping to publish in the near future. So very, very close to what you wrote. Um, I don't have repetition in mind. You have a bit of repetition. You say two hours twice. Avoid repetition. Okay. So those slight mistakes, those slight differences, uh, using that correlative conjunction of not only but also, a little bit broader range of vocabulary earns me that extra 1.5, two bands difference, Dylan. I hope that makes sense. So I've used yours as an example, and thank you for that, Dylan. Your, your answer is a strong seven, by the way, as is, okay? All right, uh, Roshni Kunte says, I write frequently because I am preparing for the IELTS exam, and this demands good penmanship uh, in task two. So I write two hours each day, which helps me to improve. Okay, Roshni, good. I corrected some of your word forms and a little bit of your grammar as well. So make sure to review that correction. Sharuk Zaiton says, I usually express my inner feelings and thoughts by writing some revelations in my diary almost every day. Currently, I'm working on my first novel that a friend of mine is going to publish. What's your novel, Sharuk? Share that with me really briefly if you go down that path. Otherwise, it's really good. Um, your diary is a physical object. It's a book. Your revelations are your realizations. It's what you 
think about and your eurekas like, oh, yes, of course, that's how the world works. So that's a revelation. It's your discoveries about life. Um, so revelations is abstract. Your diary is very much physical, concrete. So careful how you express that. Feelings and thoughts by writing some revelations in my diary. We usually take our revelations and we write them in our diary. Pay attention, careful with information mistakes, students. Those cost band scores. All right. Uh, Mona M says, I only write when I have something to state, which happens to be almost every day. The same applies to blogging. I feel compelled to post if I believe that what I write is of relevance and interest to the world. Uh, Mona, that's good. I still don't really get how often you write. So it means you only write when you have something to say, but how often is that? Almost every day? Okay. So f you frequently, you often write. Um, students, when we write, I know we do this in English. Native speakers do it as well, but we don't actually say. Uh, we state. When we speak, we talk, we say. This is commonly misused in writing. Uh, we commonly will refer to a piece of writing as saying something, but in fact, we're stating something. It's much more accurate. Practice that in the future, okay? So practice using the verb state when you refer to your writing and say when you refer to yourself talking, Okay, they're more accurate that way. There are other verbs that you can use for expressing yourself in writing versus expressing yourself in speaking. All right. Nilu Far says, to speak frankly, every day I write at least 30 minutes to improve my writing skills. I write about various topics apart from these, approximately an hour to write key points when studying new lessons. Uh, Nilu Far. In that situation, don't use to speak frankly. Um, anybody know when we use that expression to speak frankly? When do we use that expression, students? So I've seen, uh, you know, it, that definitely looks like you learned it from an IELTS teacher. Um, when do we use this expression to speak frankly in English? In what kind of a situation would we use it? We wouldn't use it. So a native speaker, if you ask them how often do you write, it would be kind of awkward for someone to say, to speak frankly. We'd be like, well, why wouldn't you speak frankly? So Preeti says if we generally, we don't do it. It's a negative zone. Yeah, so it's like expressing the truth or to, to be honest. Um, it's, uh, if you're expressing an opinion, um, usually in some kind of a controversial situation, okay, uh, used to express an opinion or when expressed, used, let's, let me re write this, used when expressing a, an opinion, often a strong opinion. opinion in a controversial issue, okay, uh, meaning to say it honestly. Okay, so um, the reason I stopped there for this is because if you use this kind of an expression, like to speak frankly, and you use it incorrectly, so you use it for this kind of an answer, how often do you write? Um, the examiner will think that you're trying to impress them with memorized phrases, uh, which is okay. Of course, all phrases, we memorize them at some point in our lives, but we have to use them naturally and correctly. Okay, so if you're not sure, don't use it. Okay, if you're not sure, don't use it. All right. Okay, um, next question. What do you usually write? So what do you usually write? 
Okay, give me a nice answer to this one. What do you usually write? Juan Pablo says, I often write about whatever comes to mind, like stories which can be possibly in a book. I like to spend time doing this just for the joy of writing. I don't uh, usually write scientific articles since it's uh, Juan Pablo. That's, I think, for the next question. Make sure you don't uh, jump ahead. Aya says, as I mentioned before, I write many books about nature. Ecosystem, I think, is a little bit off-topic word there, just a little bit. Um, but I love, Aya, how you're making a connection between your answer and what you said previously. And that's beautiful. That will earn you points for coherence, okay? Um, so Aya says, as I mentioned... Uh, I write many books about nature. In my opinion, it's a very interesting subject to write about. Yeah, very good. Okay. Anmol Preet Kaur says, I usually write some essays for practice because it is good for improving my writing skills for this IELTS exam. Okay. Uh, good, Anmol Preet Kaur. Yeah. Um, so these days... I often find myself writing task two and task one essay responses uh, that express my opinion on a one topic or another since I have been practicing for this exam over the past three months. And as I just mentioned, I'm writing a book about the damage people are causing to nature okay so paraphrasing as much as possible remember uh we just wrote here but also since i'm writing a book about environmental pollution which i'm hoping to publish in the future i'm making a connection to that so again repeat after me uh what do you usually write these days i often find myself writing task two and task one essay responses that express my opinion on one topic or another since I have been practicing for this exam over the past three months. And as I just mentioned, I'm writing a book about the damage people are causing to nature. Good. Keeping it connected. Nice. All right. Uh... Let's see, Tina Tagipur says, these days I usually write essays to practice for the IELTS exam, at least one essay a day. Good. Now, students, remember, okay, when you're practicing for these task one, task two essays, do not just write essay after essay. That's good. But don't just write essay after essay. Make sure that you get feedback and correction on those essays. You can use software like Grammarly to catch grammar corrections. You can also use our editing services at aehelp.com or gielteshelp.com to get corrections. It seems maybe a bit expensive at first, but it's really helpful and students who have used it all agree. Okay, so I highly recommend it. Um, next question here. Uh, what do you rarely write? Okay, so again, focusing on those adverbs of frequency. So what do you usually write or write about? What do you rarely write? Okay, not sure why that happened, but just a sec, I'll get you back in just a moment. All right, meanwhile, you can take a peek at my baby girl when she was just a few months old. She's a fair bit bigger now. 
And you can think about your answer to this question. What do you rarely write about? <laughs> Samir, thank you. Yes, she's a cutie. All right. Her name, Samir, is Sabella. Sabella, it's a Greek name. Um, Pachu says, well, I rarely write story books because it requires a lot of critical thinking. Sure, Pachu, that's a good answer. Yeah, most people don't write lengthy stories. Um, it requires a lot of time and uh, creativity, right? Satisfying Time says, what I rarely write is anything about religious stuff. Uh, because I have to make sure that the information I write is as easy to give false facts and make people angry. Okay, fair enough, uh, satisfying times. Uh, don't use the word stuff, so religious beliefs or religious notions. Always avoid the word stuff, satisfying times. It's just too colloquial, okay? Dark Mew 2. Uh, it says, in rare occasions, I write emails to companies such as Samsung if I want to cancel an item I ordered by mistake. I love it. That is a beautiful answer. So um, on rare occasions, I find myself writing emails to companies like Samsung, to cancel orders that I had made by mistake or no longer need the item. Sure, I love it. It's a great answer, nice natural answer. Um, Sridhar says, I rarely write about my personal feelings because I think writing these down make me weak. That's a good one too. Wow, some clever answers. Let me put that up there as an alternative. Um, I almost never write down my personal feelings like in a journal or a diary as many others often do because I feel that writing these down make me weak. And I don't know. They say expressing your feelings is a good idea. It's good for the soul. But hey, to each their own, right? Um, so another really good answer. I almost never write down my personal uh, feelings. Uh, that's a nice place to have a plural. Again, students repeat after me. So I almost never write down my personal feelings like in a journal or diary as many others often do because I feel that writing these down make me weak. All right. That is awesome. Great. Here we go. Next question. Do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? Always answer the why. Okay, always give a reason of why. Uh, so do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? Hmm, that's a bit of a thinker. Hugh Bui says, well, it depends on what I'm doing. I prefer the computer for most of my writing because it's faster and I can save copy of the documents. Hugh Bui, you have some really good ideas. Please don't use the word things, especially not twice in the same sentence or in the same response. It's painful. Um, it hurts the examiner. It hurts the ears. Uh, things has zero value. Ladies, gents, the words stuff and things, forget about them. The less you use them, the better your English will be. Hugh boy, it's a really good answer. Just take out those word, take out the words things, okay? And uh, take out the word you. You're not talking about me. You're talking about you. So take out the word you. Uh, so... Otherwise, that's a good answer. 
Uh, let's see some more before we get to the example here. So Hugh Boy, one more time. Well, it depends on what I'm doing. I prefer the computer for most of my writing because it's faster and I can save a copy of the documents, but I still like making notes uh, or writing ideas down by hand. I feel it's more expressive. Give me the reason, Hugh Boy, why? Okay. Apinav Lumba says, I mostly prefer to write on the computer as I can edit and delete the sentences and I can correct my mistakes whenever necessary. Much easier than making a mess on paper, right, Abhinav? Much easier than making a mess on paper. Make that comparison. I'll give you a better band score, all right? Dr. MD Nassim Reza says, well, I feel comfortable to write by hand because I have more control over what I'm doing. Uh, I feel it gives me a better flow of my thoughts to express in writing. Yeah, that's true. A lot of authors will agree that writing by hand gives a better flow to connect thoughts to paper. Jameson Joseph says, I always opt for handwriting compared to computers because handwriting gives me good focus on the matter which I'm expressing, okay? Take out that repetition, Jameson, of writing, and you don't need to say focus and concentration because they are the same words, right? So just one, not both. Don't be repetitive, students. Um, so when I'm working, I prefer, I opt, let's paraphrase, to use the keyboard as it allows me to make corrections and write faster, more so than writing by hand. However, when I express my ideas or take notes. I prefer to handwrite as this gives me more fluidity and control. All right, so just took a couple of your ideas and spun them together into a response here for you as well with maybe some new word forms for you to learn. Repeat after me, students. Do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? When I'm working, I opt to use the keyboard as it allows me to make corrections and write faster, more so than writing by hand. However, when I express my ideas or take notes, I prefer to handwrite as this gives me more fluidity and control. Students, that is all the time I have for this class. I am deeply sorry if I couldn't get to all of your comments and responses. I promise that I'll try to get to more and more every time and different people each and every session. For now, the best advice I can give you to improve your communication skills and your IELTS scores is to join our premium package at aehelp.com. Get our app, Academic IELTS Help, for the academic version of the test, and gieltshelp.com for the general. This is what the general website looks like. Click on that red button to get access to our amazing materials, and this is what the academic looks like. Click that red button there to join us and learn from six exams, over 100 hours of videos, and a fully interactive course with over 400 slides of instructions. Thank you so much for participating, sharing your thoughts, your energy. I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend, and I wish you all the best in your upcoming studies. Much love from Budapest. Bye for now, everyone.